The only thing I'm worried about filming this video is that you're always gonna worry about you good old snakes. Just a good, good little look around over here. Now I don't think there's any snakes really here, but uh, this is Australia, and in Australia, always gonna worry about your sneaky little old snakeroos. Sneaky little old snakeroos. Hey guys and welcome back to 101 things to do before we die on Big Out Travel. It's nice and cool, it's nice and refreshing and it's a perfect place to get into some of this list. If you haven't already seen part one and part two of this list then you need to go and check that out after this video, not now, not before the video finishes. Go and check it out after because there are some massive places, massive things to do and massive events that we've already gone through and we've only gone through 20 so far. But anyway guys, let's just get straight into it. Here's part number three of the 101 things to do before we die on Big Cow Trouble. All right, so number 21, and we are already at a cavernous location. <laughs> some of you may have heard of this one, some of you may not, but it is regarded as one of the most beautiful and one of the most famous cavernous locations in the world. Number 21, we have rode through the Blue Grotto in Italy. The Blue Grotto is a cave on the coastline of Italy in Capri. Now, the reason why it gives off this kind of bioluminescent blue water is because obviously you've got your opening at the top, which is where everyone rows through, and literally under the mouth of the opening, right at the bottom, there's also another opening. Opening. So it's like the two, it's like the refraction of light, the two lights coming together. I'm not 200% sure, I'm sorry guys, I did, I tried my best to understand it, but basically because the two lights come in at different angles, it gives off this really beautiful blue light. And with the water already being pristine clear in the Mediterranean, like, it just, it's just incredible. Like, this is just an incredible place to go. It's about 60 meters long, 25 meters wide, but 150 meters deep. But the most unfortunate part about all this is apparently you can't swim. Apparently you can't actually jump off the boat and have a swim inside during the day and Anyway, because it's connected to the ocean, no one can really stop you getting a boat and going in at night time. No, I wouldn't say no to. But swimming or not, this is a beautiful location that no matter where you search online, everyone says you have to do this. Five star reviews. And it's just the big what you want to experience in Italy. <laughs> Number 22, baby. You just know I'm excited. My mouth is watering up. My eyes are watering up. I love my sushi, man. I love my sushi. And that's why number 22 is eat traditional Japanese sushi in Tokyo. You know that age-old question where someone's like, you get stuck on an island and you must eat this one food. You can only choose one food to eat for the rest of your life. Easily. Easily. <laughs> Easily done. That's the easiest answer for me. It doesn't really make sense why people do love it. It's like raw fish, it's seaweed and rice all together. It doesn't really sound fantastic, but it is fantastic. <laughs> now I do get the sushi that I've had is really westernized and they don't really have the westernized style sushi in Tokyo, Japan. And although this is mainly regarding sushi itself and not, you know, going to Japan, but I feel like actually going to Tokyo and eating it in the city where like there's just millions of bloody people in the one area and you can really get that true Japanese vibe. Traditional sushi being made right in front of you by people who live and breathe the stuff. I'm hungry now. I'm hungry now. Number 23, we've got trek to the Siwa Oasis in Egypt. When you think of Egypt, you don't really think of water, do you? Like, you, obviously you think of the Nile, yeah, that technically that's water blaze. Uh, no, that's not what I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is you don't really think of water being in the middle of sand. You usually think of Egypt as just like sand and sand, and, and, and when you get to the end of the sand, there's more sand at the end of the sand. But the Siwa Oasis is something different altogether to the entirety of Egypt, really. They've got their own customs, they've got their own language, but it's a really interesting and, and, and different part of Egypt that no one really knows about. For some reason it's really underrated and, and, and it needs to be shown more. And that's why I want to chuck this on this list because everyone thinks, oh, okay, let's go to Cairo, let's go to the Pyramid of Giza. But that's great and I want to go there too. But I also want to find those little secluded areas that not too many people know about, not too many tourists know about. And I want to show you guys that there's more than just what you see from the main cities of areas and the main populated tourist areas. I think that the vlogs that we do at the Sea World Oasis are going to be an incredibly unique experience, something that not many people know about. And I'm really looking forward to it. Number 24, and no way you've heard of this. No, no way you've heard of this. The Koreans definitely know how to mix things up in life, uh, whether it's by TV shows or, or music or just mud festivals. They know how to mix it up, make life interesting. Bo Young Mud Festival literally started because a cosmetics advertising campaign. Most people are already aware of the beneficial effects that mud has on the body if you're rubbing into your skin and stuff, but that was the main reason why this festival was actually initiated, so that people could learn about the cosmetic effects. So I don't know who's coming, but I'm throwing some mud, I'm slinging some mud. I'm gonna be known as BKR. Monster. Number 25, and this is big time. This is absolutely big time, and yet you still probably wouldn't have heard of it unless you're from Europe. This is Visit the Donau Inselfest Festival in Austria. Now you've heard of Tomorrowland, you've heard of Coachella, you've heard of all the biggest festivals in the world. 
But have you really? If you haven't heard of Donut Intel Fest in Austria, then no you haven't. No, no, <laughs> no you haven't. This is literally the biggest open air music festival in the world. Across three days, just three days, they attract three million people through the gates. Three million people through the gates in three days. That's on average one million people per day. That's nuts. <laughs> That's nuts! I don't know if you can really comprehend that number, so let me help you out. The MCG is about 100,000 capacity. Per day, they get in 10 times the capacity of the MCG per day over a three day time period. I didn't chuck this on the list because of the actual, you know, music. I chuck this on the list because I want to see 3 million people in three days at the biggest festival in the world. What? The next up was actually the one from you guys, the BK Army. At the end of every single video, I ask you to put down two two different bucket list items that you want to achieve in your lifetime. And every single video I'm putting in a suggestion from you guys, the best one that I find, I'm going to be chucking it in there. I've specifically left one space per video. You guys have some pretty awesome ideas as well. And that's what this one is. Number 26, suggested by Connors Gaming. We've got sandboarding at sunset in Dubai. This to me feels very similar to the volcano boarding in the Caragua, just without the possible death of the volcano erupting on you at any given time. I think this would be pretty awesome. You know, being in Dubai, being in the sand dunes, jumping on a plank of water, just surfing down the sand. I think that'd be really sick. Yeah, look, it's gonna be extremely hot. It's gonna be extremely hot, but I can just imagine how we're gonna film this. I can imagine getting the angles as we're going down with the sunset in the background. And I think this would be really cool. I genuinely just think this would be really cool to do. Number 27, and this is an interesting one. This is a kind of weird one. This is Traverse the Salad de Uni in Bolivia. I'll be honest, I never expected to go Bolivia. I'm not gonna lie, never really expected to go Bolivia. But when I came across this, I'm like, no, 100% we're going Bolivia, we're gonna be doing this. This is like 10,000 square kilometers kilometers of salt flats, reflective salt flats. When I look at this place, I actually get that feeling of Johnny Depp in, in Pirates of the Caribbean where he's, he's trapped, well Captain Jack Sparrow is trapped down in the middle of nowhere and he's just looking across and it's just like, it's just white. Is this where they got the motivation for this? It's just a really interesting geological feature that everyone says that you must see in your lifetime and you must go to because it's just really, I don't even know. I don't even know what to explain this as. I don't, I don't know what to explain this as. But it does look really cool. I do want to go see it. And apparently it's really cool to go across on a four wheel drive or something like that. So I don't really know what to expect with this one. I'm excited. I'm not too sure why I'm excited. But I'm excited to see something new and, and unique. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Number 28. We've got shark cage diving in. Cape Town. Whose idea was this? It was mine. Oh, shit. I don't really need to explain too much on this. Shark cage diving, pretty self-explanatory. You jump into a cage and they like throw fish guts all around you and great white sharks are trying to attack the cage and it's a terrifying experience that a lot of people want to experience, including me. <laughs> don't know why I want to experience that, especially after seeing Jaws and also the fact that cages can get broken into, especially in South Africa where Cape Town is, which is known for some of the deadliest sharks around the world. I was very close to putting South Australia on this list because South Australia is very well known for its deadly great white shark. But online, everyone keeps saying the best shark cage diving experience that you can have is actually in South Africa. I think the reason why people are so fascinated with this is because they're so close to death without actually having to experience death itself. Like you could jump in the water, go for it. You're gonna die. You're gonna die if you jump in the water outside the cage. Jump in the water inside the cage. You're safe. Extent. Number 29, we've got Worship Buddha at the Shvedagon Pagoda in Myanmar. Now guys, obviously oh, I'm not a Buddhist, I, I, I don't practice Buddhism, which should be kind of, <laughs> which should be kind of obvious. The Shvedagon Pagoda in Myanmar is actually regarded as the most sacred pagoda in the entirety of Myanmar. When experiencing this world, yes, it's great. See the different places and do different things in different places. But I don't think you'll ever really truly appreciate the world as it is and what the world has to offer unless you put yourself in someone else's shoes, unless you really try and appreciate another person's culture for a day. And although I'm not a Buddhist myself, I feel like going to the most sacred temple in Myanmar to see how Buddhists live their life and to, to be a Buddhist for a day and just appreciate another culture, another custom, and another person, just like me, how they live their complete life. I make YouTube videos, I have fun at sporting events, I travel the world, that's what I want to do. But these people have literally no interest in that. They have interest in relaxation, you know, uh, meditation and, and, and practicing Buddhism, which is something that I have no 
no interest in doing. That's just, it's like, I, I, I would love to practice it for a day just so I can put myself in somebody else's shoes and really appreciate the world for what it is. Finally, guys, at number 30, to wrap us up a part number three of the 101 things to do before we die on Big Cow Travel, we've got a really respectful one. We've got one that I truly cannot wait to experience. We've got one that really means a lot to me and really means a lot to Australians and New Zealanders alike, and that is to pay respects at Gallipoli on Anzac Day. Now, for people who aren't aware what Gallipoli is or, or what it represents, basically for Australians and New Zealanders, it means a lot, man. It, it, it truly means pretty much everything in regards to how we're living our life today, and the people that lost their lives make sure that we are living the best life that we possibly can. Gallipoli is a beachfront location in Turkey that was a massive location for World War One. It truly is a historical and meaningful place on this earth for us to really respect our history, to really respect the world's history, and to really respect people who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Now, although we celebrate and pay respects to the fallen in Australia, going to Gallipoli is a whole different ball game. Going to the actual place that happened would be an emotional experience. I just feel like it'd be something else being there in Gallipoli on Anzac Day, listening to the last post at sunrise. Well, anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. If you like it, please give me thumbs up so that you're enjoying this content. Don't forget, I want to see what you guys want to do on your bucket list. Go and comment below two things on your bucket list that you want to experience, and I'm going to choose the best one that I see to go into part number four. If you want a part of Big Cow Army, guys, firstly, go and subscribe to Big Cow Travel, then go and subscribe to Big Cow Sport. Hit notifications on both of them so you get a notification every time we upload. We upload every single two days here on Big Cow Travel, but we upload every single day on Instagram, so that's a little, little plug as well. That's a little, little cheeky little plug. Big Cow YouTube. And as I always say, guys, you know what's coming next. Live your passion. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot do something. If you truly believe you've got what it takes to do what you need to do, then go and do it. Stop telling yourself you're going to do it and just go and do it, man. That's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.